Hello everyone, I hope everyone's well wherever you are. This is a radio I picked up recently at the recent BVWS auction. This is the Pi QAC2 from 1937. Uh, I think I paid about £15 for it from memory. It's not a um, top quality set, it's uh, aimed at the middle of the market I would think. Um, it's only got a two wave bands on it, medium wave and long wave and a, just a three position tone control sort of bright down to mellow um, there's a tuning knob and it's got a perspex dial on it one thing I did notice is, uh, is the grill cloth originally would have been quite nice it's uh, sort of sparkly gold and black I guess unfortunately it's a little bit too far gone up here there's some holes punched through it luckily the speaker cones are right I think it's been eaten away down here big shame I'm not sure if I could try and repair that with some gold thread or something I'm not sure I guess as soon as I remove it from the cabinet it'll all fall to bits anyway the cabinet itself is not in bad condition um, it's not got any flashy veneers you know uh, any expensive veneers on it but it it has got some sort of marquetry detail on it knobs are just straight pull on uh, sorry pull off knobs um, the top of the cabinets and when the camera focuses in top of the cabinet has still got its pie logo there if I get into shadow there um, always a problem to try and uh, refinish the tops of these old radios. Uh, a lot of them, uh, HMV um, were were one, Bush were were another. They used to put their logos on top of the radios, so you got a nice big water stain or, or whatever on the radio, and you you sometimes have to try and work around the uh, decal here really, really carefully. But that one's nice; it's not been scratched or anything. Let's see if I yeah. Let's have a look inside the radio. It's a three valve plus rectifier set, what we call over here a short super het. It's typical uh, late 1930s British radio, uses uh, seven pin valves. These ones are actually the original Ever Ready valves. I've given them a, a bit of a polish up, um, but I've not done anything else to the radio really. Um, I like seeing these. I think they're absolutely beautiful. This is the rectifier. Um, I think these valves are actually mullard valves, but just rebranded with uh, with the Ever Ready logo because they're straight equivalents from the mullard range. So, pen 4DD there. So quite a nice little little set. Um, just had a quick poke around it, checking all the uh, all the inductance measurements and things, and it seems to be okay. Sometimes, you know, you get a radio and you get all all enthusiastic about repairing it, you know, and you find the mains energising coil for the speaker uh, is uh, open circuit, but it but it seems okay. It's got the uh, electrolytics here in this cardboard packet here. Um, that might be quite challenging to undo. It looks as if that tab should pull straight out, but I guess that's glued in. But um, yeah, I th think I have a lot of rewiring ahead of me because it's done the usual thing and all the wiring's crumbled. Here's a earth wire for the transformer here. You can see as soon as I touch it, it just all falls apart. Um, and this grid cat wire should of course go onto that and it's been pushed back down inside but again that needs to replace if you look at it it's uh, bare wire there yeah that's a faint ever ready logo it uh, all seems to work okay it's got a nice clunk when you turn the main switch it's always a nice sound that's a lovely sound expect it to start purring in about a minute or so so 
I've uh, got my notebook out and um, started to write down all the things that need need to be fixed. Obviously, this thing's got to go, and then all the wiring before I can even think about applying power and you know just to just to see if it works a little bit before I strip it down. The chassis is not too bad. I've uh, just given it a wipe over there. There's a little bit of rust there and another bit behind, the, bit behind these uh, IF cans here. The uh, tuning capacitors within this metal box so it shouldn't be in too bad condition. I'll have to work out how to get that out. And this bracket here holds the two dial lamps. Nice big Magnavox speaker there. It's got a 2000 ohm um, mains energising coil on it. The audio output transformers within the chassis here. So it's a project. Um, this, uh, I'll just stop the video here and turn the radio over and we can have a quick look underneath. Okay, this is the underside of the Pi QAC2. Usually it's a little fiberboard plate that sits sits here and covers the bottom of the chassis. Chassis. And uh, have a look, it's it's quite interesting. This has got all its original components. There's nothing been replaced here. It's quite interesting. I've noticed this before, I don't know what the answer is. A lot of these capacitors pre-war and I guess through the war up until after the Second World War had none inductive written on them, whether it was a specific brand and that was just part of their their marking if you can see that if it focus that lovely writing on it, that lovely font none inductive there's no dripping wax either which is Another good sign. It just looks like this has finished its useful uh, service and gone up in someone's loft. The chassis, the, the upper sh um, chassis, was uh, was covered in about half inch of fluff. And then this uh, red sort of dust was, was everywhere, which is uh, part of the reason I cleaned the valves off. Um, and I guess, you know, this, this red red dust I, I you know had a chat about it with one of my colleagues at work and and um, my view is that this set came from the west of England around the Birmingham Worcestershire area where the soil is very very red and uh, I don't know whether it's true or not but uh, yeah, everything had this red sort of film over it and still has if you look at the uh, I don't know if you can make it out really other than the years of smoking I don't know no, I'll probably hoover it, I've given it a good old vacuum out but uh, it's like this red see it on my thumb it doesn't show very red this red sort of dust which I can only assume came from the soil around the area where it was but um, anyway I make an interesting project I don't really usually repair, repair 1930s radios um, even though this one's quite a simple little set they have their own problems like these funny little wave band switching um, switches here which can cause problems this is the tone uh, the tone capacitor oh sorry the the tone uh, control here just three positions and obviously the on off volume Yeah, quite interesting. The audio output transformer up here. That seemed to check out okay. I've not really had the access to uh, check it out properly. But anyway, a little look. This will keep me busy for a few months, I guess, because it'll all need to be rewired. Quite interesting. They're using cloth wire, mostly below chassis and uh, rubber coated wire above and you've got this um, the original heat shrink here um, it's called um, 
Sister Flex, and I'm sure there are other there are other brands. There's a piece of it here. It's like a woven uh, fiberglass that uh, sort of like got an oily varnish over it. Yeah, so yeah, quite interesting. Quite interesting that it's got its got its original uh, original uh, electrolytics in it as well. Other than the main the main smoothing ones. Yeah. Should be interesting anyway. Hopefully I can get it working. <laughs> okay, bye bye.